15 actors who keep getting the most degrading roles. There's a decent debate to be had about typecast actors. Should we be viewing them as poor souls that have been limited in some way? Or should we be celebrating them for having the chance to work in the industry at all, regardless of how similar an actor's roles have been? Most of the time, typecast is an overused word. If an actor plays the same character a few times, that doesn't mean that they've been typecast. It just means that the actor has had success with a role. Even the most beloved actors in the world have taken on similar roles on more than one occasion. Having said that, not every actor and not every role is equal here. While some actors have that teacher look and continue getting cast as teachers, other actors continue getting cast in less savory roles. They may say they're happy to get the work, but there's a part of us that has to wonder if the actor feels a little strange about these roles. What is it about these actors, aside from their talent, that makes them seem so ripe for these parts? Obviously, looks play a big part, but is there something in their natural mannerisms? Maybe they're really capable actors, but for these roles, they don't need to change much. Maybe this is kind of who they are. The names on this list might not be the most recognizable, but chances are you've seen many or most of them. In fact, you've probably only seen them in these roles. Here are 15 actors who keep getting the most degrading roles. 1. Lupe Antiva Rose, made Guadalupe Lupe Antiva Rose, sadly, passed away in 2012, but she makes this list because of all her made appearances in film and on TV. Normally, it wouldn't be offensive to be cast as a maid, but Antiva Rose has played so many Mexican maids that there can be no doubt she was offensively typecast. Her most famous of these roles probably came in the Goonies but she played similar parts in a crazy number of big shows and films. Some numbers have her playing a maid more than 150 times. There's Reba, Alice, Charlie's Angels and as good as it gets, to name a few. When Antiva Rose was offered her biggest role as Beverly and Chuck and Buck, she jumped at the chance, saying, Beverly, her name is Beverly. I'll do it. I don't care what the script is about because her name is Beverly. It wasn't Maria Guadalupe Conchita Esperanza, this Latino stereotype. Obviously, the stereotypical roles wore her on her nerves over time. 2. Michael Emerson, Evil Weirdo Aside from his role on Person of Interest, basically every memorable role from Michael Emerson has been that of the Evil Weirdo. It's a strange category but it suits Emerson well. He's been just that. Look at the characters of Oliver Martin in The X-Files, The Serial Killer, William Hanks, On Private Practice, The Antagonist Benjamin Linus, On Lost and the Saddest Z.P. Hindle in Saw. What is it about Emerson that makes him so effective at playing the villain? It's not all in his looks, but that has something to do with it. He looks intelligent and a bit awkward. This might put some people off. There's also his voice. When Emerson voiced the Joker in the Dark Knight animated film, it kind of confirmed our suspicions that his voice was just as creepy, if not creepier, than his appearance. 3. Timothy Spall, Creepy Evil British Assistant It's possible that we're making an offensive category here. Perhaps this is just the Tim Feast all category, but this is an actor who sure seems to play an awful lot of creepy assistants. Whether it's Harry Potter, Sweeney Todd, Enchanted, or any of his other similar roles, Spall is often the conniving, evil, creepy underling. He's done very, very well in these roles as well. Now, that's not all Spall does. His Winston Churchill in The King's Speech might be his best role to date, but he is most memorable playing the sneaky antagonist. The best test for a creepy actor is to play the ultimate creepy role in literature, that of Fagan in Oliver Twist, which Spall did for BBC. While his version of this character was more sympathetic than usual, there's still so much weight behind the character that it doesn't improve Spall's unpleasant stereotype. For Noel Goodley the Hector. 
Most of the typecasting or similar roles on this list are character types. Well, Noel Goodley and he had that happen to him as well. He almost always plays a gang hanging and violent type, typically a lower class Southern California gangster. But, for Goodley and he, it goes a little further than that. He's also been typecast as a guy named Hector. In total, he's played Hector eight times and only a few have been in the Fast and the Furious franchise. He's almost never just a regular Hector either. He's Cholo Hector. 5. Reginald Bell Johnson, Loud Cop. Reginald Bell Johnson is a face that everyone knows. We also all know him in one particular role too, the Loud and Overweight Cop. This role goes all the way back to Ghostbusters in which Bell Johnson played a corrections officer that led to cop roles in Die Hard 1 and 2, Plain Clothes, Turner and Hooch, one of her own, Chuck, Girl Meets World and many more. His most famous of all his cop roles is from Family Matters, playing Carl Winslow. Bell Johnson seems to have created a chicken or the egg scenario. Is his character type a stereotype that Bell Johnson just happens to fall into or have we created this image of a loud overweight cop because of Bell Johnson's many memorable roles? Obviously, the man has done very well for himself and we doubt that he regrets his career, but you gotta think he rolls his eyes a little whenever he gets a call to play a cope. 6. Tasha Smith, Angry Black Woman Tasha Smith is an actress whose face is much more memorable than her name. She's a talented actress, but many have wondered if she'd been unfairly typecast in an angry black woman role. This is a type of role that has become well known for black actresses, one that has many variants but remains the same at the court. Perhaps the most famous of these roles have come in the Why Did I Get Married film franchise which also spawned the TV series for better or worse. In that Tyler Perry vehicle, Smith plays the outspoken and always angry Angela. Of the typecasting, Smith has said, I understand when people say that because no one wants to see the character who is always negative. For me, even with Angela, I don't write her, I play her. And it just so happened that I've been blessed to have a character that has lasted over five years. It's a beautiful thing. But of course I want to evolve as an actor too. I don't necessarily want to play the same kinds of roles. Well, even outside the franchise Smith plays angry black women. Maybe she is angry. 7. Hamid Hamid, Terrorist For the Egyptian-born actor Hamid Hamid, the only acting opportunities he had in the early going of his career were roles playing various terrorists. Though he jokes about it now. His first encounter with this type of role came in the Steven Seagal movie Executive Decision. In the film, he was credited as Terrorist No. 4. Since then, Tomic has played the terrorist in Roseanne, Jack, You Don't Mess with the Zohan and Iron Man. More recently, things have changed for Ahmed. He landed the starring role on Sullivan and Sons in a non-terrorist role. He also ran his own comedy tour for a while which allowed him the opportunity to make fun of the roles that he was offered early on.